Good morning. Today is Monday, May 16th, 2022. This Thursday's Lag Omer celebration is the one-year anniversary of Israel's worst civil catastrophe in modern times. The stampeding at Maron of hundreds of thousands of Jews celebrating Lag Omer led to 45 deaths many more serious injuries and widespread trauma that continues today. In the immediate aftermath of that tragedy, there was an outpouring of sympathy, assistance, and unity, as there should be. Last year, I told you this story of Yakir Asaraf, a non-observant Israeli. Of course, most of the victims at Meron were those within the religious Hasidish community because it is the large number of that community that goes to Meron, the Mount Meron near Tzfat in the northern part of Israel on Lagba Omer. But Yakir Asaraf, a non-observant Israeli, decided he had to do something. And so he went to make a shiva call to one of these Haredi families, one of these Hasidic families. And after he left, he wrote, it could be I just experienced one of the most significant moments of my life. I just left the Shiva. My heart is simply bursting with mixed emotions. My eyes are filled with sad tears, but my heart is filled with Simcha. My friend Maor and I, dressed in jeans and t-shirts, entered their home. We really stood out in the Haredi crowd. Some people looked up and two wonderful Haredim quickly got up and let us sit exactly opposite Menachem Mendel, the father of two of the victims. The father noticed us and quickly stopped speaking Yiddish with the other people who were visiting and turned to me and Maor and spoke to us in Hebrew. And he said, I'm happy you came, he said. And his eyes are wet with tears, but his face is radiant. When will we ever have the merit to meet together, you and I? Look what it has taken for you and I, me, a Haredi Jew, you secular Jews, for us to be able to meet. You should know, he continued, that what's happening here right now is the truth. You and I are pained by the great loss. We are giving strength to each other. It doesn't matter if you're religious or secular. We're Jews. And Yakir wrote, This meeting represents the truth of our people, the endless ahavas chinam, baseless love we have for each other, and our shared pain, and the tremendous faith that continues to unite us. And that is as it should be. But there are three more crucial steps, especially, to take today. Rabbi Melech Biederman mentioned that there is a minhag, a custom in Yerushalayim, that if a person attends a funeral, God forbid, at the end of the funeral they announce, don't leave the same way you came. That's a min hug in Yerushalayim. If you came from this road, leave on that road. And they make this announcement at the end of a funeral. Don't leave the way you came. So this is a specific min hug, a custom. It has to do with Kabbalistic sources. But it has a deeper meaning. And it applies to every one of us and it applies to every single funeral. Don't go back to the way you were before you attended this funeral. What happened, this loss, and again, it could be a gigantic catastrophe, it could be an individual loss, whatever it is, it's got to change you. You can't be the same afterwards. Don't go back to being the same person that you were before this loss occurred. So the first step is to hold accountable those who were responsible. The danger was known. 
In fact, what happened last year had happened before with only slightly less tragic results. It was clear what needed to be done. Politicians who pressured police to not limit the numbers, to not impose the, so the safety restrictions and the plans that had been developed, those people have blood on their hands and they should be held accountable. All of those rabbis who saw this every year that they were there and they heard the warnings and they did not speak up to insist on safety changing, safety changes, blood is on their hands. Police, civil engineers who gave in to the pressures not to impose full safety plan, they too are responsible. I've shared with you before, some of you before, a fascinating passage in the Talmud, Masechta Tainis. The Gemara says that the great Rav Huna, Rav, Rav Huna was one of the great scholars of the Talmudic era. And he was a leader in his community. And the, the Talmud tells us that there would be a stormy day. They could tell that a storm was coming. Rav Huna would ride around in his carriage and to see if there were walls that were weak, to see if there was an area that might crumble in the face of the oncoming storm, to proactively find the weaknesses and insist, command, that they be fixed and shored up before the storm hit so no one would be hurt. Ravuna didn't wait for the walls to crumble. And then fast and cried to God, why did this happen to us? The losses we have, say, we have, we have suffered. It's not what Rav Huna did. Rav Huna acted proactively on a regular basis, preventing this from happening. Where is Rav Huna today? We need Rav Huna. We need rabbis who are willing to live up to the expectations of what a rabbinic leader should be. To walk around and to look at the safety and to proactively take the steps necessary to ensure the safety, which is in accordance with Jewish law. To prepare for a holiday for a rabbi is not just to, to think about what speech you're going to give and not just to think about how you're going to dance and how you're going to celebrate. The first question has got to be, like Rav Huna, how do we make sure everyone is safe? Where is Rav Huna today in Israel? Where is Rav Huna today in the, in the world? I know a few, but there are far too many. And now, and that's the reason I'm saying this, don't tell me, well, huh, not everybody learns that passage in the Talmud. Who knew about Rav Huna? I didn't remember that Gemara. I learned it 30 years ago. So let's review it now, before Lagba Omer. This is what rabbis should be doing now. I can tell you this is what I'm doing now. We have an adapt barbecue. It's my responsibility. And I take that responsibility to make sure that there will be safety precautions there. There's a tragic, tragic uh, reality. It's heartbreaking. Jews are overrepresented in burn centers more than any other identifiable group. Rahman Litzlan, God should save us from this. But because so many of our rituals, Shabbos candles, Hanukkah menorah, lighting the Shabbos candles on Yom Kippur and sometimes leaving the house, a, yiz, a, y a Yizker light, a yard site light, and it's left and someone leaves the house. And bonfires on Lagba Omer and barbecues. And, and burning chametz on Pesach, on and on and on. So many of these practices involving fire, and we're not careful enough. And Jews are harmed way out of proportion per capita to other groups. We should never leave a flame lit without being present and on guard for it. Never. 
There is no mitzvah that comes before that. And we see the results. Rachman al-Litzlan, we see the results. Before Lagba Omer, when it is productive, when there's something to do about it, when we can take the action necessary, now is the time to review these laws. The Torah says, if you build a house or you have a house and there is a flat roof and people can go up on the roof, you have to make a fence around the roof, a railing around the roof, so that somebody doesn't fall off and hurt themselves. Says Rav Shamshon Fol Hirsch, this is a general legal warning against having anything dangerous in any place where we're responsible for it. To leave a cord out where someone can trip. To leave something plugged in and you're going away and maybe it could cause a problem. To leave a light lit, Shabbos candles lit, and you thought it was safe, but you went out to someone's house and you come back and it's, and Rahman al on there's a fire. And Rav Hirsch goes on, this is also for the local authorities to intervene to have anything at all which might be dangerous removed. We must demand of our leaders, of our politicians, of those who are making laws, those who are imposing the laws of the police, for example, that these laws are followed. The Rambam goes further, Maimonides, in codifying this as Jewish law that is binding on every one of us. It is a positive mitzvah, a requirement, a mitzvah to remove any obstacle that could pose a danger to life and to be very careful regarding these matters. If a person leaves a dangerous obstacle and does not remove it, he negates the observance of a positive commandments and violates lo sasim dam and secha. Do not cause blood to be stilled. Our sages forbade many matters because they involve a threat to life. Whenever a person, okay, emphasis, right? Capital letters here. Whenever a person transgresses these guidelines and says, I will risk my life, what does this matter to anybody else? Or, I am careful about things, it's not going to happen to me. He should be punished with corporal punishment for his rebelliousness. I'll tell you the truth, I have not been following closely the news from Israel since Lagba Omer. Who has been held accountable? How are they being held accountable? Who has not been held accountable? What are the measures that will be in place this year? Certainly, I hope people have learned their lessons. I hope there are significant changes, but, um, but at the same time, every individual must take responsibility for themselves. And that applies not only in Israel, it applies all over the world. And here are, in my opinion, clear-cut Torah rules that apply to every one of us, everywhere, all the time, especially on Lag Bomer. Number one, do not go to Meron on Lag Omer. I believe it is prohibited according to Jewish law. That's it. Yes, I know it's a custom. Hundreds of thousands of people go. Yes, I know people have all kinds of reasons. A custom is no reason to allow going to a place that is dangerous until it is demonstrated that there is sufficient safety protocols in place. And that has not been demonstrated yet. Halacha is very clear, and we've discussed this many times. There is no situation in which a person has the right to set aside a possible threat to life in order to perform some other mitzvah. Especially the whole subject, as we've been discussing, of Lag Bomer is not a mitzvah at all. It's a custom, a relatively recent custom. Okay, people venerate it, that's fine. But a person has no right to go to a place that is proven to be dangerous until it is proven, not assumed, proven to be safe. Number two, do not ever endanger your life in order to do a mitzvah. 
And it doesn't matter what rabbi says you should do it or what social media post says you should do it or you should have faith and God's going to protect you. That's, 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 that is the antithesis of what Jewish values teaches. It's garbage. Because Hashem tells us exactly what to do. Hashem tells us not to take those risks. Hashem tells us to set aside those mitvos in order to protect health and safety and lives. Whoever tells you, oh, God's going to protect you, doing a mitzvah, God's going to protect you, they're falsifying the Torah. If you happen to be in a place, again, I'm speaking now to individuals, if you happen to be in a place, and it could be in Israel, it could be here, it could be at a death barbecue, and you see that there's not a fire extinguisher present, you see that there are not safety precautions being, being followed, there are two mitzvahs, two requirements. Number one, call the authorities. Number two, leave. That's the halacha. That's not, that is the halacha. Again, I repeat it because it's so widespread. Anyone who says that we're allowed to rely on a miracle to save us because we're performing a mitzvah is falsifying the Torah and falsifying God's word. Never forget that the Torah obligates us to take care of ourselves and those around us. We may never say it's fate. No, it's God's will. We can't do anything about it. Obviously, it was already decreed in heaven. Those words might be comforting to some after a, tra after a tragedy. I don't know. But they're wrong. They're never an excuse to allow a tragedy to happen. You and I are responsible for our own choices. Now, you can't guarantee what's going to happen. But you and I can take reasonable precautions to avoid putting ourselves in danger. And that is an absolute requirement of God's Torah. I share these warnings today in advance for us here and for Jews all over the world. Please follow the requirements of the Torah about safety so that we don't have to face another tragedy this year. My friends, I want to wish you a wonderful and safe day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.